Hello, I am Lost Generation, this is Medieval, let's play The Asylum Grounds. I personally find the Asylum Grounds a very memorable level. Barring the Return to the Graveyard and the Ant Caves, most levels in Medieval have something that makes them stand out. In this case, it's probably one of the smallest levels size-wise, but there's a lot of twists and turns, and mazes, and it, it kind of changes as you go along. You'll see more of that later. It makes the most of the space it has, I guess. Also, I unintentionally do that quite a bit, killing enemies off-screen without showing them. That was a hedge dragon. I think there's one other time I do it without showing it at all. Oh, say what it was when that happens. Sorry. Greetings, Sir Fortescue. My name is Jack of the Green. I am the master of riddles, and this maze is my domain. You are free to leave, but only once you've answered four riddles. Puzzles so fiendishly difficult, so perplexingly complex, that no man has ever solved them. Ha ha ha. Now, try my first riddle. <coughs> At night they come without being fetched. By day they are lost without being stolen. I imagine you can figure that one out. Jack of the Green is voiced by Paul Darrow, who also voices Zarok. There aren't that many voice actors in the game. Dan is voiced by Jason Wilson, the art director, apparently with a bucket over his head, which I think is brilliant. Uh, Paul Darrow was most famous for playing Care Avon in the 80s sci-fi sh sci show Blake 7 on the BBC. That was before I was born, so to me he's the guy in Medieval that talks really fast. Also, while I do like the level, that does happen quite a bit. You run around a corner and you're hit by something you didn't see. There's plenty of health in the level, though. There's an unusual number of health files. I don't feel it's unfair. In hindsight, at the time I was annoyed. Also, the X. First, first, I think they should have been the other way around. The main attack is that swing, and the second attack is the throw. But you probably noticed I use the throw far more often than the main attack. You, they both do the same damage, as far as I can tell. So why would you want to let them near you? And here I was trying to kill this guy before he rings the bell, but didn't manage it. You'd eventually have to wake them up anyway to get the chalice. I'd prefer to do it on my own terms. They're not too dangerous really, this this level not to the same as the sleeping village, but it's the emphasis is on combat. It's sort of on puzzles, except the riddles themselves aren't hard, it's just figuring out like, as you've noticed by now, the answer to his riddle is stars, it's just figuring out how to answer it. You don't get a dialogue box or anything. Later on when I kill something off screen, it's just a bigger version of this thing. Well done, Sir Knight. But my star riddle was but a trifle. I always like to begin with an easy one. Return hither. You will not find my next conundrum so simple. You can kill it, but... You'll never have to go back there, so why bother? I live for laughter. I live for the crowd. Without it, I am nothing. This one is less obvious, if it weren't for the fact that I think I've already seen the answer to it, run past it earlier.
Also, when I said that the level is quite small size-wise, I'm really glad of that, because with all the twists and turns, the backtracking would be very annoying if it took more than half a minute. Oh, also every time you answer a riddle, new enemies appear. Don't assume that just because you've been there before, you know what's going to happen. There is no point picking up shields when you're at full health, the uh, or at full shield health. And it's now obvious the answer is a clown. But this puzzle is very easy to overthink. Uh, it's certainly the first time I did it. Not the recording, but just the first time I ever played the game. I got stuck in it. You probably think, oh, it's when you hit one switch, the others turn. So you have to hit them in a certain order. But it's actually simpler than that. You hit everything until it's one turn away from being gold and smiling. And then, when they turn gold, they will stay there for a certain amount of time. Each one stays for a different amount, for a different length. So you get them all one hit away from being gold, and then just hit them all quickly. The only thing I think is important is to do the middle one last, because it turns over it turns back almost instantly. Right. Yes, it was a clown. Very clever, I'm sure. Return in haste, Sir Knight, for I wish to see the despair on your face when you hear my next cryptic puzzler. As I said, it's easy to overthink it, but... It sounds simple even now that I'm saying it, but if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I got so stuck on this when I first played, I did too. It's a bit of a trick, I think. Face like a tree, skin like the sea, a great beast I be, yet vermin frighten me. And the next change to the level is these cat golems on the ground. You can't do anything to them, and they don't do anything to Dan. But they are important. Also, these enemies again are vulnerable to chicken drumsticks. They're close to the point that I said I was saving them for, but this isn't it. Well, when I say close, it's not this level. One thing with the axe is, if you miss, you can't fire it again until it returns to you. Well, it is very good, and it doesn't cost you any money. It, on faster moving enemies, or slow, smaller enemies, like imps, that... Oh, there will be imps again, but... Then, the axe isn't so great, then. On the other hand, the smaller enemies are usually weak, so the crossbow still has some use in that case. Uh, I like that the chalice in this level and some other levels is in plain sight. You, even if you don't get all of them, you're not going to go through the entire game with just the uh, throwing daggers and the small sword. Unless you want to. I debated cutting out things like backtracking this level, but as I said, it's... It doesn't take very long to go back and forth, and new enemies appear. Even when I get lost or take the wrong turn, it only adds a few seconds. One thing I don't know if I've said, when you have multiple enemies in range at the same time, you press L1 to switch between them. While I sometimes hit the wrong enemy, that's my own fault. I can't blame the game, I just tend to forget you can do that. It doesn't come up very often. He fires two fireballs at a time, then you jump up and hit him. So, looking back at this, I feel slightly bad for trampling all their flower beds. Didn't even notice I was doing it. I don't know if it's an intentional thing that's quite clever, or just coincidence, but for me, every time I go past those bird hedge things, it's some bird-tweeting place. Oh, there's now a mouse following Dan. 
and you can't hurt your new friend. Why would you want to? He... I suppose you figured out what this is by now. You have to get the mouse to the elephant hedge thing, and you can't let him touch the cat golems. They don't hurt him, but if they touch him, they hiss at him and he runs off. I've seen a speedrun where they got the cats to chase the mouse into the elephant, but I'm guessing that's just pure luck, because it certainly never happened when I've played it. Other than that, it's... the cats are really slow and... Well, so is the mouse, but it isn't difficult to do this. Uh, I think the mouse doesn't follow Dan's footsteps exactly. It just takes the shortest straight line to him. If you run too far ahead, he might go into a, a cat even though you were nowhere near it. Other than that, it's certainly easier than the clown puzzle. Oh, if you're thinking that elephant looks a bit weird, but with a big ridge on its back, that wasn't a mistake or anything like that. That'll come up again much later. Did you spot my bluff? I pretended that riddle was hard, but in truth it was obviously an elephant. This time, however, I almost pity you. The answer to my next vexing enigma has eluded the finest minds of a whole generation. Come to me. To be fair to Jack, I'd think pretty highly of my riddles too, if I only got to test them on inmates and hedges. I tolerate the moon and stars, I can't abide the sun. Banish me with torchlight and you'll see me turn and run. So you've hopefully figured out what that one is, or have a rough idea. Once again, it's just a case of finding out how and where to solve it. That chest is a bit tricky. If you did manage to kill that guy before he rang the bell, then the chest itself would ring it. And you'd have already used it, so you couldn't use it on the um, zombie gardener guys. I'm not entirely sure what they are, actually. I don't know if they're staff or inmates or... Who knows. Probably shouldn't think too hard about a game where you're a skeleton who pulls his own arm off. And here's me going the wrong way and killing that thing off screen. It, its head is basically just a big sphere. There's hardly any details on it. Probably the most interesting thing was the dragon at the start, and I nearly missed that too. One thing, even though those enemies aren't threatening at all, if I had people had voted for the flaming longbow first, they'd work quite well on those. I don't know if they do extra damage or just burn longer or whatever, but it certainly feels as though it works better. Once you've found this room, it's easy to solve. Just push the torches next to the window. You'll know when you've got it right, because there's a little musical cue. So, that's it for the puzzles. Blast you! It took me ages to come up with that darkness one. Very well. Outrageous as it seems, my vast intellect has been matched by your badly decomposed brain. Return at once and I shall give you your prize. I don't need to fight these guys, I've already got the showers, but... Force of habit, I guess. Back to Jack one last time. You think you're so clever, don't you? Here you are, sir, clever clogs. I grant you free passage through my maze. Find your own way out. I try to find out if Jack of the Green is based on anything, and the closest thing I found is Jack in the Green, a character in many May Day parades. Pictures down on the bottom right. The Jack in the Green is a man in a cone framework covered with flowers. 
the suit is traditionally worn by chimney sweeps. No one knows why, which seems to be a requirement for turning something into a tradition. If it was the inspiration behind Jack of the Green, then Jason Wilson and Chris Sorrell have a very strange thought process. Personally, I think someone got stuck in a Christmas tree, then made all of this up to save face. And there's one last puzzle. It's the only difficult thing is if you know nothing about chess and don't know that the bishop can only move diagonally. The rest of them you just chase onto their colored square, and they'll go in any direction. The bishop you have to hit diagonally, which is going to be annoying in a bit because it can be a bit hard to convince it. It's not very doesn't seem to be very good at knowing where you're standing when you hit them. Like the queen went diagonally when I thought I'd hit her horizontally. So this takes slightly longer than it used to. It doesn't get hugely frustrating though, it's just a bit odd. Interesting idea though. It probably would have been easier if I did the bishop first, now I think about it. Much easier. There was a cut cutscene in the game where Dan unpicked picked the lock on that gate with the glowworm, his targeting glowworm. I will be showing near the end of the Let's Play how you find that. No new commentary, so... Well, I didn't run a second vote. Only one person voted for the Golden Shield, and that was just because no one else was voting for it, so I'm going straight for the longbow. Flaming Longbow. Golden Shield is an upgrade, it just doesn't do anything new. Oh, Danielle! I've got something here I can give you, but I've no idea what it is. Do you fancy a little gamble, like? When he gives you the Longbow, he mentions that it can shoot flaming arrows, so how did he forget that so quickly? Nothing really matters, because I still got it. It'll be fairly useful in the next level, though actually, you'll need all your weapons in the next level. If you're playing along and you haven't done the ant caves yet, then you really want to do them now. For the time being, though, that's it. Uh, I am Lost Generation, this is Medieval, and I will see you inside the Asylum. Thank you for watching.